Um, um, my name is Valeria Flores. I'm part of MHPSS.net team. And we're happy to be hosting the webinar on behalf of the Mental Health and Psychosocial Support and Peace Building Working Group. Today, we have the presentation on MHPSS um, disengagement, disassociation, reintegration, and reconciliation programming supporting Somali women by Ismahan Abdi and Luki Omar. And I will pass now the floor to Katie, uh, who will be moderating the webinar on behalf of the um, working group. Thank you. Thanks so much for the introduction and uh, for having us today. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on MHPSS and DDR programming, today with a focus on oh, Somalia. Um, before we go to the presentation from our colleagues in Somalia, I want to just say a few words about the um, MHPSS and Peace Building Working Group. Maybe we can go to the next slide. And yes, please continue introducing yourself through the chat function. Yes, next slide, please. So this is um, a webinar series that is organized by the Peace Building Working Group as part of the IEC MHPSS reference group that probably a lot of you are familiar with, uh, the reference group that has um, the task to implement the IEC guidelines on MHPSS in emergency settings, and that actually guides our MHPSS work overall um, in, the, in the field. Um, next slide, please. So more importantly, talking about the working group on MHPSS and peace building was established in 2019. Um, you see here the, the members that are currently part of that group. So, um, and the group is currently co-chaired by the International Organization for Migration and Catholic Relief Service. And the group tries to strengthen the link between mental health and psychosocial support and peace building through development of guidance and technical and facilitation of technical discussions and exchanges on those topics. Next slide, please. Yeah, I don't want to take more time away from our presentation. So going directly to our topic today, um, we talk about Somalia um, and about um, DDR programming, a topic that we haven't really haven't really been discussing much in this webinar series before, as if I'm not mistaken. And before going into the presentation that will be um, done today by Ismahan Abdi, I want to introduce um, the two colleagues to you who are going to share their experience, their rich experience from Somalia um, and um, help us to discuss um, relevant aspects of this, this important work. So going to first to Ismahan, Ismahan Abdi is a case management coordinator for the International Organization for Migration in uh, Somalia. Um, she is uh, based in Mogadishu and uh, she oversees the MHPSS activities in the IOM DDRR program across five rehabilitation centers in three regions in Somalia. And she also works to support um, the GBV uh, section of, of that program. She's a clinical social worker and has been working on mental health stabilization and um, peace building programs in Somalia since 2019. Maybe we can get your, um, I don't know if it's visible, your, your image as well, your photo or like your video into the room. Um, Ismahan, I at least, um, for the people be able to see you who are joining the webinar. Um, I'm also introducing Lucky, Lucky Omar. She will join us for the question and answer um, section of the webinar at the end. Um, Lucky is has been working um, in the same program and as a role of a project manager for the Women in Peace and Security Project. Um, which provides gender responsive rehabilitation reintegration services to women, as you will see right now, women who disengage from violent extremist groups. Um, she has worked in Somalia and the East African region since 2013, and her professional experiences include rehabilitation, reintegration, strategic communication, and community-based research economic sector development um, and is uh, has been working serving before as a communication and public relation advisor to the prime minister of Somalia. 
Um, Lucky is joining us. She has a, holds a master's degree in education, gender, and international development from the Institute of Education, University College, London. Um, so she will join us in the question and answer section, as I said before, to, to go into the discussion. As I said earlier, we haven't really discussed uh, much uh, on, on DDRR-related matters before in this webinar series. And um, MHPSS has always been part of DDR programming. Um, that means disarmament, demobilization, reintegration when it comes to supporting former combatants or army members uh, to help uh, them through the into the um, transition to civilian life. And that also includes supporting not only the former combatants, but also of dependents or family members and the communities they are returning to. Um, recently, more recently, over the last uh, few decades, we see another challenge coming into the DDR field that is actually violent extremism. Um, so a lot of countries have to deal with the fact that um, there is also the risk for uh, or the, the potential risk of re-radicalization when people return uh, after combat. And um, it adds another layer uh, to the DDR program. And we go, we are going to look into this field today um, by talking about what IOM calls the disengagement, disassociation, reintegration, and reconciliation program. I want to start right away handing over to Ismahan for the presentation and please feel free to use the chat function so that we can see your questions and we can get to them after the presentation. Over to you, Ismahan. Ah, thank you, Heidi. I think the presentation. Yeah, I think we need the presentation back into the room. Yes. Next slide, please. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We'll go through the introduction of DDR program in Somalia and the understanding the situation of female uh, farmers associated with Al-Shawab. And we'll be focusing on the women program um, and the MHPSS outcome and activities in this presentation. Over uh, next slide, please. Uh, as Somalia has been, um, has been uh, Somalia has affected uh, civil war, um, violent extremists for over 30 years, three decades. Um, as you know, the country has affected by serious droughts, uh, internal displacement, and a lot of um, problem, other problems. So the Somali national, Somali government has implemented a national program for treatment of handling disengaged competence and youth at risk, which is IOM uh, is implemented right now. Um, the DDR program, the national program has the five different pillars, which the first pillar is an outreach, uh, reception, screening, rehabilitation, and integration. First three uh, uh, pillars is implemented by the government where I am is mostly involved in the re rehabilitation and the integration uh, process. Next slide. Um, the IOM Disengaged Association Reintegration and Reconciliation Program uh, Transitional Rehabilitation Plan uh, period is three three we, three months to six months. Uh, we recently changed this period. Earlier, it used to be six months to uh, twelve uh, six months to one year. However, we've changed it recently just to focus on the mental well-being of the beneficiaries and uh, the livelihood. Uh, we also have a reintegration phase, which is six months. And this reintegration phase is implemented by the community, uh, so, uh, community organizations. Next slide. Um, the rehabilitation and reintegration program has um, a variety of services available for the beneficiaries. Some of the protection and basic needs is a uh, 24-hour security for male beneficiaries. In this case, and an on-site security for female beneficiaries. Our, I will get into this. We have a female and a male centers in our program. So in 
male centers, the beneficiaries are accommodated in the centers, uh, while the female beneficiaries are day comers. So they have an uh, on-site security. We also provide non-essential items for male and female both, transportation allowance for female. We also provide meals, three whole uh, meals for male and uh, for women while they're in the center. We also have a protection uh, safe house, child care for female beneficiaries, access to medical care and rehabilitation support, which is as the case management and psychosocial support that we provide in our centers. It's, am I had well? We provide psych, uh, religious counseling, uh, religious counseling, which is actually interlinked with the case management and mental health uh, psychosocial support unit. And they work hand to hand uh, as Somali community, one of the big, uh, strong identity is their religion so and the reason of the aspect of joining al-shabaab uh, most of the factors is believing the interpretation of islam one of the things that we are all working is to read the radicalizations that we work in is to uh, provide them with religious counseling so that they can um, have the right education of the religions also we provide a basic educations so that they will be able to run their businesses and uh, be able to read and write. Uh, a lot of the defectors live in, they live in a, 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 a villages and uh, the places that have a limited access of education. We provide civic education as so the idea is to uh, want to get close to their country and like know their civic responsibility and civic uh, rights. Livelihood educations and uh, livelihood livelihood grants. I'll get into this one. And also on reintegration phase, we provide case uh, case management similar to this one. With this case management to re, uh, on the reintegration phase is mostly focused on the livelihood aspect of the beneficiary. Uh, community mentoring, which is one another beneficiary who already graduated from the pro, from the program mm -hmm. has been successful, will provide uh, mentoring uh, sessions, counseling sessions for the beneficiary just to guide them and help them through the process of reintegration. Uh, religious counseling, uh, social cohesion activities, which is one of the biggest element in our program. Also, these activities will brought together community members, the uh, even the professionals, the beneficiaries in the program, and we'll have for integration activities. Some of them are just music, sound, uh, dances, just to bring back together to the community. Some of them are uh, discussions and just to reflect back on life. Uh, recreational activities and outreach activities, uh, mentorship, I've mentioned that, uh, and coordination. And this coordination, what I meant is, the case management and mental health program is always uh, it, the work they're doing is to mainstream the programs, the activities that the program they are providing, and also provide uh, referrals, uh, links if the beneficiary needs. Next, next slide. Um, for years, uh, for years, the national program has almost exclusively supported for a male disengaged competence. That means we haven't had a female program. Currently, we have three different uh, rehabilitation centers in Kismayo. All the rehabilitation centers is run by IOM in, in, in Somalia. Sorry. All the rehabilitation centers is run by IOM uh, in Kismayo. It's run by IOM since 2017 by Devo since 2013 and Mukdusho, which is the last one that I am started implementing is, which has been previously run by Adam Smith is, uh, I am is running it since June. Uh, the program, the male disengaged program competent has supported over 2000 disengaged across three uh, locations. Second slide. As I mentioned, uh, for years, the program, there was no support for female program. Uh, for women that are disengaged in the national program, uh, women had a, 
and still have a limited access to traditional community support mechanisms uh, and, and clan elders, which is, um, is a support system, a traditional support system in the Somali community. Uh, so in the need of more systematic response and role in violent extremist organizations reflects the unique of circumstance of women. Recent years has highlighted the diverse complex of role of women in Al-Shabaab. Somalia has signed a UN security resolution uh, 1325, but has not been yet developed. This is under development and UNSOM is working on it. Second, uh, next slide. Uh, this, uh, this content is from a research conducted by Adam Smith International Organization, and it will like uh, tell us how the beneficiaries have been recruited, roles, and locations uh, they uh, usually defect from. Uh, a lot of women are recruited as same ways as the men. Some participate in the groups due to religion, ideology reasons, economic motivations, and some of them joined uh, because of their husbands, uh, Al Shabab, and some of them are being forced, uh, religion, uh, marriage, marital force. In that, uh, that's how they join. Um, unlike men on the locations, unlike men uh, who must normally leave their homes to live with the fighters uh, in the group bases, in a military bases, women serve the group from their homes and the cities and villages. Um, including the territories that is controlled by the government. Uh, a lot of women, um, a lot of women have a different role. Some of them are fighters, some of them are just um, are wives of associated with Al-Shabaab people who ideologically believe that Al-Shabaab relig uh, religious interpretations. However, a quite number of uh, women is an, Take part of the uh, uh, take part of the war, which is some of them are in the intelligence network, uh, particularly Amniat group. Some of them work on the business, and also um, some of the, a lot of them take part of the recruitment as well. Uh, next slide. This data is from an IOM. Uh, data that collected by our social workers in center. Uh, this is chart you see is the reason that they've joined uh, the, 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 the most, the one that is the longest, if you see is the, I believe because I joined al -Shabaab because of the uh, interpretation in Islam and other reasons for female is they joined because they uh, followed their husband or their family. Uh, so their brothers, their uh, fathers. So there's always a male figure they um, joined because of them, or they believe this, their religious interpretation. Next slide. Um, al Shabaab wives, uh, are they are wives on Al Shabaab members? So one of the most difficult aspects in this program for women is dealing with the bloodline of between female Al Shabaab members and Al Shabaab wives. Challenges many women belong to both categories. Um, they, they sometimes they will start with to be the wife and gradually uh, be part of the uh, part of the uh, part of Al Shabaab and maybe rec recruitment or spy or. Uh, handling the business and economic support of Al Shabaab. Uh, a lot of them, are, one thing that is common in uh, in the group is forced marriage. Uh, it's a common practice. Women are abducted, others are compelled to marry a militant who uh, demands uh, some of them. Uh, and the, the another practice in the group is wife inheritance. Uh, when a def someone defects from when someone defects from Al Shabab, uh, if the husband defects from Al Shabab, they are forced to marry. Uh, the wife is forced to marry another Al Shabab because they don't believe if this person defected from them, they can no longer be married to their wives. 
So a lot of the women defectors that are coming to our centers are people who ran away uh, from forced marriage or inherent marriage and have been and uh, have seen a lot of hardship during their defections. Some of them walked days and just had a lot of, uh, a little of uh, bread and water just to sustain uh, life and will come uh, in, in the community malnourished and uh, you can see a lot of difficulties. Uh, next slide. Next, uh, the reasons that you uh, they leave from the group mostly is the hardship or uh, women, Al-Shabaab, their husbands not treating well or taking their responsibilities. Uh, many women uh, stop being involved with Al-Shabaab simply because they, the cohesion of the task that were supporting in the group, particularly when they had been assisting the group secretly from homes. Uh, women leave from the a lot of different uh, problems, including uh, lack and hard conditions of life, wanting a better life for their kids. So, uh, next slide. As I mentioned, uh, for years, the program has, uh, national program has been supporting male disengaged. Uh, in 2019, IOM implemented a pilot program in three regions uh, to support the with the support of, from the UN Peace Building Fund. The program supported 150 women, 50 from Kismayo, 50 from Baidawa, and uh, 50 from Mogadishu who have been associated with Al-Shabaab, family associated with Al-Shabaab. Next slide. Uh, the successful pilot of the program led to expansion of the program and construction of two centers, one in Kismayo, one in Baidawa, the centers, uh, one, the female, by the center in Baidewa was opened in March 2020, while Kismayo uh, Center is op opened June 2020. Since 2019, the female program supported over one to 3,027 uh, uh, 3, women across three regions. And if you remember, we said over two, um, over two, the, pro the male program have supported over two uh, person, which means there's a high demand for the female program uh, because, and the reason is we think a lot of the practice that in the community is a lot of uh, male get married to more than one wife, two, three, four. In that case, there's a mass, uh, mass defection of uh, female uh, associated, formula associated with Al-Shabaab. Next slide. Uh, after the implementation of the uh, pilot program, these recommendations came out uh, just to uh, customize the program, the male program to the, uh, the need of the females and the women. Uh, to shorten the screening phase, a lot of beneficiaries uh, Go, go through jail or um, what is it called? Uh, a committee, uh, reception to period, which is the period before they joined the rehabilitation center and after they have uh, handed over themselves to the authority. So there was a recommendation to sh shorten that the screening phase uh, and governments, uh, we included the government centers and uh, protection cases in case there's a protection case. Uh, screening uh, adopted agenda needs females. We have also recruited, the government also recruited, but IOM is supporting female screeners, female focal point and security guard. Um, the other thing that we did is to make sure to uh, recruit for female staff in the areas of the health, mental, uh, MHPSS, as well as the center management. And the reason why we chose is just for them to have to be able to feel safe when they are when they're expressing their needs and feelings with the staff program. We've added an extra thirty dollars for the female uh, defectors. As I mentioned earlier, the center, the female center, is a day center, which means they will have to come to the center and they will need a transportation. In that case, we've added an extra $30 for transportation. 
And if you see here, uh, 100 USD NFI, we provide the NFI, uh, the NFI uh, kids in a money form 100 so that they will be able to take the decision and choose what they wanna buy. And one thing that you will see is a lot of women choose to buy food for their kids or uh, clothes or the beddings that they will need to sleep. In this NFI case, we provide uh, for, for male centers, we provide the items that they need when they come from, uh, when they join the program, which is the hygiene kit, the clothes that they can wear and the beddings. We also created an applicable schedule for women, which is uh, women friendly, three days a, uh, a week that they will come to the center. And the reason behind this was a lot of uh, women have kids and they will need to be able to, uh, the, the, the small thing that they're getting from the program may not be able may not be able to cover their needs. So they need, some of them needs to go for labor works and some of them need to take care of the kids. So that we added. And also we've also added uh, childcare. I mentioned that childcare friendly and yeah, provision of MHPS services to conflict related sexual violence uh, survivors and a dignity kid. And um, there is a large portion of our beneficiary, almost everyone I can say in that's joining the program has been affected by, uh, has been experienced conflict related sexual violence or GBV one way or the other. Sec uh, next slide. Thank you. Uh, Outcome and activities of IOM program, the activities that we are providing in the program, uh, a lot of our beneficiaries experience love, uh, experiences loss, exposure to violence because of violence, the conflict related sexual violence, uh, GBV, family separations, uh, discrimination among others that have led to a high level of distress of the female uh, associate, family associated with Al Shawab. So uh, the program is designed to primarily target uh, the rehabilitation phases, primarily target their mental well-being. Um, so uh, IOM Somalia supports female associated with AH through case management, including individual uh, individualized individual case plan, uh, counseling, group counseling, medical care personal education plan, clinical care for GBV survivors. Uh, in this in including the individual counseling includes um, religious counseling. As I mentioned earlier, uh, religion is a, a big, fact, big um, element in the identity of Somali uh, community. And it's another, uh, it's an, another driver that a lot of People, a lot of uh, defectors have joined Al Shabab. So uh, we focus on to be able to provide this beneficiary the clarity uh, through individual counseling and religious counseling that it's, they both work hand to hand, uh, as well as uh, life skills and finance and literacy and business plan. On um, all the three act uh, activities are interlinked. Uh, always work together. We provide a referrals. That referrals is internal referral or external referral. So when I say an internal referral, that means case management uh, team will refer cases to uh, in the, uh, religious counselor, counselors when they see the beneficiary uh, has need so maybe a clarity or in need of religious counseling. Um, on the life skill and finance and literacy, we are focusing on this person to be able to be prepared for the community, uh, to be able to uh, build their own business. So the business, um, the livelihood activities include business activities, uh, business classes, which is generate your business and yeah. So they will be able to generate their businesses and manage, be able to manage. And at the same time to come over the trauma and the, uh, they have been through and the hardship. 
um, the social reintegration supports, uh, psychosocial posts and social reintegration supports that we provide in the centers as well as um, uh, reintegration level is poetry projects, uh, theater workshops, collecting the storytelling, which is my favorite traditional sto uh, stories and mural painting. Do you see this? Uh, uh, the first beginning of the slides, you will see a very beautiful uh, mural painting. Those are a beneficiaries story. Each and every picture has their own stories and a by a by uh, gathering, which is a, a form uh, a gathering, a form of Somali women, a way of the Somali women come together and discuss the current problems and current situations that is going on in their community and come up with uh, solutions, a potential solutions, whether it's that awareness or maybe a community needs a first aid. So those are the activities that we provide. Um, Storytelling, uh, Somali community is an oral community. Storytelling as well as um, traditional uh, poetry and traditional songs is a way and a form of communication. Uh, so we focus on to bring back the tradition uh, and the community uh, way of communication in order to be able to work on the peace building. Yes, next slide. What? Uh, give me a minute. Um, can you go back to the, the last slide? Oh, thank you. Yes. I need a minute, yeah? Um, we, I, I wanted to emphasize here the traditional um, activities that we conduct in the center um, and including, and also the religious counseling on, on the traditional activities that we can, uh, the storytelling and uh, po uh, by a by traditional gathering for, for my Somali women is, as I said, is a form of communication and also uh, first aid and religious. We also have an religious gathering activities, which uh, the, the group activities that is provided in the center are usually beneficiaries are usually divided into the beneficiaries need. It's each and each, each and every groups uh, groups are individualized. The 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 debates are individualized. Therefore, um, a lot of our ac activities that we are conducting is focused on the uh, the the group to meet the group's need. So there's a religious groups and debates um, as well as um, just learning sessions. Second slide. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, a lot of beneficiaries experience loss and grief and uh, lost their family connection with their families. How, what is the outcome after we provide each person's the individual counseling, the group counseling, the religious counseling, um, as well as the civic uh, classes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the reason why we are focusing on the religious counseling and the civic counseling, uh, uh, civic education, as well as case management, a lot of these beneficiaries have lost their identity. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone here knows, but when they join the group, uh, the first thing, first thing that they do is they will change their names. That means their identity is, uh, is lost. Uh, they, do, they cannot pick their flags. They cannot uh, speak Somalia as a nation. And there's a lot of 
a lot of uh, challenges and a lot of gaps in 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 the uh, there's a lot of confusion in their identities and that's the what we focus on to work with them on on the mhpss we work with them on their religion uh relationship can you please uh did you take off the this? yeah i don't see the icons i put name an example uh yeah. religion relationships i don't see it exactly we it's it's just a, a problem i think with the with the presentation so maybe we can go back and i can just mention it so here on the right hand side we have relationships with others here we have engagement down yeah. here basic needs having control over one's life mm -hmm. attitudes about oneself and purpose in life uh, unfortunately those titles have disappeared oh no problem so um that what we work with them is their relationship uh, the basic needs a lot of people a lot of them when they come in they don't have uh they lost their livelihood they leave their homes behind they leave their businesses behind uh the uh far, most of them are farmers and uh in that case we provide livelihood uh while they're in the center uh food shelter for the uh male and as well as uh special needs cases for female clothing uh only one's identity uh having the desire to leave uh that were the, the things that change is thank you the the what what the outcome that we get from is you will see a lot of people having hope in life thinking about future uh, what did you do mm -mm. give me a minute yeah let me mute. Maybe we can go to the next slide. Ms. Mahan. Sometimes there are connection challenges. Yeah. So, 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 just, yeah. so do it. Uh, okay. Thanks, okay. Lucky. Yeah. Maybe we can come to We the have end. time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's, do that. Because we have a number of questions already in the chat. That's very nice. So we have enough time to discuss yeah this, thanks yes. for uh the community the on the reintegration level that what we do is a community engagement activities the the aim is the active the community to participation capacity building for both sides uh, accountability resilience um okay second and then the next slide uh, this beautiful picture is one of the activities, the mural activities that we were conducting in the center. My friend, uh, colleague who is now right now in the audience was leading this activity at the time. Um, we focus on, we focus on uh, these activities that you see that I've mentioned, this element that we mentioned here is a lot of the group activities, uh, it's the, our topics, for the group discussions and the group activities. And uh, we call it reintegration uh, activities. And it's to meaning that what are the important areas and elements that we need to work with these beneficiaries that to be able to, um, to be able to, okay, to be able to um, go back to the community. It's forgiveness, resilience, culture and diversity, uh, which emphasizes to to be to tolerance and peace building. Uh, what's the role of women in peace building? Second, second slide. Next slide. Yes, uh, these are some of the activities we do. I think it's done. All right. Um, 
we're coming to an end. Maybe we can just show the last slide that mm -hmm. was in Go the ahead. presentation. The mm -hmm. last slide on that that example oh, yes. um, that was mentioned here by Ismahan, yeah. which was focusing on poetry. There are other activities that the the teams used on the ground, but one was uh, as Ismahan described already. Um, the oral history or the oral um, tools to or communication is very important, and that was used by the team to uh, actually reconnect uh, people, but also to work on their identity as a community member, but also as an individual, um, and preparing people to think about um, different images of themselves than the association with uh, Al Shabab, for example. So. Thanks a lot, Ismahan, for that presentation. I know there's a lot of things to uh, to describe. It's a very extensive program, and um, we have Lucky now joining us, who has been working on that project for several years. Uh, thank you, Lucky, for joining. Um, and I will just go straight to the questions and comments. And of course, Ismahan, you also feel free then to to jump in. But maybe I can go to the first question here. Um, a question on research. Have you um, conducted any research on the impact of the intervention activities? Um, that's the first question. Second question, um, what is the percentage of men to women in Al-Shabaab? Um, let's maybe take those first two questions before we continue. Over to you, Lucky. Thank you. Uh, the first one on research. So the DDR is constantly evaluating our program as we go. Um, there have also been, particularly on the women program, a few key pieces of research that have come out over the last few years. And we're happy to, to share the research uh, that is out there on the women's uh, women in Al-Shabaab in general in Somalia. We're happy to share that. Um, on this question about the, the percentage of men to women in Al-Shabaab, that is a very hard thing to know uh, because this is uh, obviously a group that is quite under the radar when it comes to being involved in the society. However, um, one way we think about it when we're looking at the women um, that are coming out of, of Al-Shabaab is there's a lot of marriage in the group. So when you think about for one man in Al-Shabaab, you're talking about four wives or more. Um, so there is a large, very large number of women in the group, but again, it's very difficult to know numbers for this group. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lucky, for that answer. And maybe to add on that question on research. So the the, the as you heard, the the program is continuously monitoring um, um, the, the the project and also um, the outcomes. And also maybe to add to that, I I remember that especially the social reintegration activities. Um, um, there was an attempt to to actually. Um, measure the outcome of those social reintegration activities by a social cohesion questionnaire. I remember the mission was working on something, maybe with a very small pilot project. I don't know how far this has grown, but uh, that actually showed uh, preliminary data that there is an increase uh, in trust and um, like um, comfort to to receive uh, former Al-Shabaab members. I think it was not differentiated for men and women and to in also in terms of forgiveness but i think the biggest piece was really like accepting people um and communicating with them that was something that was measured i think from the side of the community so community perception we go to the next question um, that we have in the room um, on the services where do those services take place maybe you can say something about is it community-based or hospital Based here, it also says prison based. Um, so, just to share maybe uh, how it works. Um, what are human rights or are there human rights parameters integrated into the service? Who delivers the services? Maybe you can say something about the, the, the staffing and also in terms of how do you work uh, for with uh, how do you deal with mental health disorders, including substance use? Um, what do you do with people uh, if there are no mental health specialized services in place? So I'll take the first couple and then Ismahan can talk about how the, de how the delivery. Um, 
where do we deliver? So as Ismahan mentioned in the beginning, IOM is primarily involved in the rehabilitation and reintegration phases, and the services take, part, take place in the rehabilitation centers, as well as in the community-based organizations that we work with. And there are social workers in all five uh, rehabilitation centers, as well as uh, social workers in the community-based organizations. They are supported, trained, uh, and led by Ismahan and her senior team, uh, the case management and GBV supervisors in Mogadishu, Baidoa, and Kismayo. Um, Ismahan, do you want to come in on the mental health, or do you want me to continue? I can come in. So on substance abuse, um, a large group of defectors have that uh, issue. So what we do is we provide an individualized or a group counseling uh, plan, uh, which myself, the case management and GBV supervisors, as well as the social workers come together and I develop an, a comprehensive plan to help this, uh, the individual. And also we have a support groups uh, uh, formed in the centers that can also help them. On a dis uh, if there is a case that have uh, mental health disorders that is above uh, my capacity, we, we, well, what, what we do is we currently have um, mental health hospital in Mogadishu. In, if the case is in Mogadishu, we uh, re do referrals to the mental health hospital. But however, in Kismayo and Baidewa, we do not have a ment I We haven't seen any mental health uh, hospitals. What we do is we try to manage the cases. If it's uh, if, it, if we can't do that, we, prov we send them to, uh, we do referrals to uh, general doctors so that can uh, help us manage the cases. Over to you. Thank you. I hope that answered uh, your your question and uh, from the chat. I'm going to the next um, question. Uh, there were already a few um, social cohesion activities mentioned, but there was again an example, like a question here on could there be more examples, or maybe more importantly, the question on do you differentiate between the social cohesion activities per group? Yeah, or is there how do you choose which activity should be um, provided? There's a participatory aspect to the to the activities that are selected, and uh, both community members as well as the beneficiaries of the program do have input into it. Uh, so it's it's a very collective process before an activity is selected. There's a lot of consultation around it, um, and it's heavily based on uh, on the Somali culture and what is attractive and what is um, what is you know, familiar to the people so that it's easier to, to do an activity that has a, a personal connection to people in the community and can enhance the, the principles that we're trying to enhance. So, uh, for example, men might select an activity that is more familiar to them, and, and the women might say this, like earlier, Ismahan had mentioned a bye bye. It is a traditional collective women's uh, activity where um, problems are solved, um, planning takes place. So, we use those pre existing structures to further what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, there was actually also a question in the chat. How do you use the abayabai? I mean, do you keep them uh, in, in the structures, uh, like how they are built in the centers? Or will they also have an impact on people's life afterwards and the reintegration process? I think they do because none of these activities are happening in a vacuum. They are happening within the community. And even when they are happening in the rehabilitation centers, I think it might have been mentioned in the beginning that the women program in particular is non-residential. So women live in the community. So not only is it uh, within the center, but also within the community-based uh, organizations that we're working with. And there's community participation as well. People from the community are participating. So. Uh, the way we look at it, it is, it is, it goes beyond the three to six to twelve months that somebody might spend in the program collectively between rehabilitation and reintegration. 
Thanks a lot for clarifying that. There was again the question, Ismahan already um, made reference to it, but in terms of religious counseling, is that something that is specific to Somalia or do you think uh, it's something that is also implemented in other contexts? And um, I heard you use um, group supports in terms of religious counselors. Can you say a bit more how you relate to, for example, including or how you bring in religious leaders or um, a person from with that background into that process? Or do you use any specific um, approach? Can you describe it a bit more in detail, please? Well, I can kick it off and Ismahan can feel free to add. Uh, so for the religious aspect of our program, I think a large, uh, a big part of Al-Shabaab's identity is religion. And it's also a huge part of Somali cult uh, identity and culture in general. So it would be, um, it wouldn't make sense to run a program like this rehabilitation and reintegration for people who are leaving Al-Shabaab without addressing one of the biggest pull factors, uh, which is religion and how Al-Shabaab um, put forth this narrative about the religion that is contrary to what the rest of the society holds. So in the centers, there are religious scholars who are part of the staff and who conduct the religious counseling, but then also there have, we've made use of um, other religious scholars and other people within the community who uh, are familiar to, to beneficiaries and staff alike and people whose opinions are, you know, um, are respected. So we use, for example, what one of the curriculums we have is an audiovisual curriculum where religious, uh, not only beyond the religious counseling, religious lectures, religious lessons are offered in a way that is more digestible to people uh, from an oral culture. So it's videos and audio lectures uh, and also very helpful to a lot of the beneficiaries in this program with very low literacy. Um, so the, the religious teachers provide the counseling, but there's also group discussions around these uh, topics that are offered uh, as part of the MHPSS in the program. Mahan, do you want to add anything to that? I think you've covered it, Lucky. Thank you for that answer. Maybe there uh, there is a question related to that, um, or not maybe exactly to that, but to the question of risks. Yeah, so working with former associates, there's always uh, the discussion around how do we deal with uh, the risk of potential re-radicalization. Um, how do we know when is the right time to let people integrate into the communities and so on? Can you say a few words on how you manage those risks in the program? Well, I mean, it's a very extensive program in terms of while the individual is going through the program, there's a lot of focus on uh, on their well-being and on their rehabilitation, both mentally and as well as financially, things that make the person able to go back into the community and stay. And for the 10 years that this program has been running, we've only heard about a handful, uh, not more than five of people who've gone back. So I would say that out of the thousands of people who have gone through this program, both men, men and women, um, the recidivism rate is negligible when you compare it to the numbers of people who've gone through. That said, it is not, it's really, it's impossible to say what will stick. Right, uh, we can we do our best. We put the program together as we think that is uh, gonna have the maximum impact. However, it's very difficult to know what an individual person will do once they leave the program and when they go back to the community and the external pressures that do exist. But from what we've seen over the last ten years, there's a very low uh, rate of people going back. Also, once somebody leaves the group or defects. Um, their life is immediately under threat from Al-Shabaab. So going back is not a question for many people because they have they have become non-believers according to the group. Uh, they've rejected what they had signed up for. So their life is automatically under threat when they leave. And I think that goes a long way in encouraging people 
to stay within the community. And the fact that the community is accepting and taking people back is also a big part of why people are staying. And the livelihood aspect of this program is also very helpful because it's one of the factors that draws people in uh, when they don't have a means to support themselves or their families. So uh, even while they're in the program, the stipends that they receive, the resettlement grant that they receive, the financial and life skills uh, uh, literacy and all those uh, different aspects beyond uh, psychosocial counseling goes a long way in making sure that people do not return. Thanks so much for this. Music. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for this very comprehensive answer. That's mm -hmm. actually a good, a good uh, way to finish this uh, this webinar. And there were still uh, two more questions in the room, but we, we are running out of time. I really want to thank you both, uh, Lucky and Ismahan, for for the presentation, for the discussion. I know it's a rich program. I really think uh, we have a lot to learn, and it's a very complex uh, situation as well. You're dealing with. And uh, it's it's good to hear that the the number of people who are actually re radicalized after a while is so low. I think that's quite a success uh, criteria. We we might want to say it that way. Um, I'm handing over to colleagues um, from mhpss.net to um, bring us to the end of this webinar. And thank you all for joining today. Again, thank you, um, thank you Ismahan and Lucky for the great presentation. We will now be sharing a exit poll that we would like for you to please answer before you leave. Thank you so much for joining us today.